Okay, you guys, welcome back to So Bad It's Good. This is your Tuesday episode. We have a returning guest, and listen, this is, I consider her a professional professional, so I'm going to make her get into the dumpster and talk a little bit of Vanderpump, because I know she has very strong opinions about uh, Vanderpump, but she is a wealth of information. Uh, she is the co-creator and host of the Gloss Angeles pod, which we talked about a lot last time, but she is a reporter, producer, she's a host, and I love this. She covers the intersection of beauty and entertainment, and in no way can I express that more than even the videos that she was posting over this Oscar weekend, there was one I was just fascinated with in regards to the special effects makeup. Uh, you guys know that I'm a huge Batman fan, and I just, I love when we celebrate the intricacies and the artistry that goes into these things that we truly, truly love and that stay with us, and I think these things should be celebrated. That's why I can't wait to get her opinion on the Oscars, and then we're going to go into the dumpster of Vanderpump Rules, but welcome back to the show, Kirby Johnson. Kirby, what's going on? Oh, you know, I love that you call it the dumpster of Vanderpump Rules. Like It's that, a dumpster lately. No, I mean, I feel horrible all the time now. But also, it's not only a dumpster, but then there's like a literal dumpster that everybody used to congregate around. <laughs> yes, so it's, just, yeah, it's like yeah. very fitting. It's it, it, very fitting. It, it's, well, it's, uh, that's the thing is that it's funny when you show little to no growth over 10 seasons. Oh, like, you know, nobody gosh. nobody's grown up like at all. Okay, I will say this, and I am biased, I'll just say it, but Katie has grown up a lot. I think okay. that I think that we have to give credit. A lot of people, I know we're going to get into this in a minute, but I do, I want to get on my soapbox right now. People are <laughs> like, you know, everybody on this show cheats on everybody. Fam, Katie has never cheated on Tom Schwartz. She never cheated on Tom Schwartz. There was no infidelity on that side. It was yeah. Tom. Tom cheated on her when they were married, apparently. Well Oh yeah, multiple times. Of course, I was even shook. Tom said. Wait, by the way, even Tom said that in one of the first episodes. He was like, "Yeah, like a couple." Of I mean, you know. But Tom would always seem like he would like blame it on alcohol and things like that, which I always right. think is such a weird excuse of like, "Well, maybe stop drinking the alcohol if these things happen." Correct. Uh, but it. But then the funny, I. See, this is what's so horrible because all of this is based around people's pain. But at the same time, when you've gone season after season with these people, then when Tom said at like Schwartz and Sandy's when Sheena was like, are you ready to date? And he was like, oh, it would feel like cheating on Katie still. And I'm like, well, what did it feel like when you cheated on Katie? You actually did do that. You, you know what that feels did. like. You Why would it feel did. like that now? You actually make such a great point because I've been, you know, obviously communicating with Katie and going, it feels weird because there's pain going on through all this. That, that's the whole through line is the pain. But it's also like it's your life, but it's also entertainment. So I don't even know how to juggle it. And she was like, I've I've seen your videos, obviously. Like, I think they're great. Um, <laughs> so she's always she's only been supportive. But I also think it's such a weird. We'll we'll get into like some of the deets that I got. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna get to Vanderpump in a second. I do want to celebrate though something that I just so deeply love. And last night's Oscar telecast and everything leading up to it, I have to say, going into it, and I told you guys this last week that I. I used to love the Oscars so much and I used to love movies so much. And this year, I think in terms of movies, we saw such a wide breadth of entertainment and things that, 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 uh, broke so many boundaries and such, such, um, just such visualization and exploration. And it made me kind of start like really geeking out about film again. And I got to say the Oscars, if you compare it to last year's ceremony, kind of hooked me in again. What did you feel like watching it? Because you watched it at the Academy Museum last night, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you and I are both members of the Academy Museum, and it's such a fun place to it's go. It's really amazing, yeah. I live pretty close, so my boyfriend and I go to Fanny's a lot, and we really just enjoy. I mean, I, I, I really just kind of lean into the tourism of Los Angeles. I love the idea of celebrities and magic behind the scenes and things like that. Like I've lived here almost 15 years and that never, I've never gotten jaded about that aspect, Yeah, but I enjoyed it. And I would highly recommend this next year to anybody who loves film and loves Los Angeles and what it brings to go to the Academy museum and watch it there at the Geffen theater with a bunch of other people who love movies, maybe just as much as you do. I don't know if you get it, like experience this Ryan, but Sometimes when I watch with my group of friends, if they're not in this industry or they don't live in L.A., 
it's just constant criticism of every single thing. Nobody can do anything right, apparently. And for me, I get kind of defensive because I'm thinking this is a culmination of a lot of people's very, very hard work. It It is actually a gift to be able to make a movie in the first place, let alone get to a point where it's being recognized on a national level like this. And so, I think we have the misconception of, oh, well, these are the actors, da, da, da. No, you know, the team of people behind this, the crew, the makeup, the special effects, the sound, all of these things are such an art. That, that's what I thought was great about last night was they started, they allowed all the categories back in. Yep. They allowed for, they didn't play off the speeches. And I thought you had some really great moments and it made me remember how many people are a part of this. This is an industry like anything else. And I think we get caught up in the, uh, celebrity of it all. Totally. Uh, you know, like I was looking at the Vanity Fair party pictures afterwards and I was like, you know, there's a difference between the ceremony and then things like the Vanity Fair party, which is great for pop culture and things like that. But half the people at the Vanity Fair, like, listen, Kylie Jenner wasn't invited to the Oscars, you right. know, or she didn't go, but they're all at that Vanity Fair party. And that's to me a separate version of Hollywood that I dig, but I just, I re like it made me kind of fall in love with movies again last night of going like, man, I used to geek out on this stuff. Like I now geek out on Vanderpump rules and it's really nice to then point to people's writing, acting, visual effects and go, this is really, this is something to be proud of, to be a proud fan of sometimes. Right. And I also think too, it was what we needed as a community of people watching the Oscars, Jimmy Kimmel, some people were kind of critical of the fact that he was hosting again. I thought he did a great job. We he did it right it, down the middle, right, right down the middle. Yeah, he was he was you know punching punching down in some aspects, but it was funny. It wasn't yeah. like too harsh. But then also he was able to be goofy. There was some levity. He brought out the donkey from Bans Banshees of Inisherin. Banshees of Inisherin, yeah. Yeah. So I think <laughs> Colin we Farrell's that. face was so great when they brought yes. out the donkey. Yeah. He yeah. Loved it. And I I thought that was I thought it was necessary. I thought he did a really great job of balancing it all in a way. Obviously, it could have been easy for the Oscars to want to just completely omit anything related to Will Smith. The slap, yeah. But I think that Jimmy was probably like, there's no way we can do that. Like, I, I personally cannot not address this situation. Like, we have to actually make fun of it because it was such a, it was such a moment. And it's kind of to your point, uh, I wanted to bring up the fact that you said, you know, it's not just the actors, it's like the entire crew that made these movies. And I think, you know, one thing about Will Smith's actions that had repercussions he probably obviously wasn't thinking about in the moment is that his movie, Emancipation, that movie was supposed to be huge. I mean, I yes. don't think people understand. Like, this was supposed to be. They said the it was going to be back movie. to back Oscars. Yes, it was going to be back to back Oscars for Will Smith. That was. 100%. It was like Tom Hanks when he did Forrest Gump, and then and it was like he had like a two year run. Oh, Philadelphia and then Forrest yes. Gump back to back. I believe. Yeah, and that's what th that movie was supposed to be for Will Smith, and unfortunately, he got shut out of everything. And and also, it's like you think about the politics of the Academy. I think a lot of times maybe people don't think who is the Academy. I think people think the Academy is literally like seven people making a decision. That That's is not the, the Academy. Globes. That's the Golden Globes. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like the Academy is like a giant group of people. And so when they say thank you to the Academy, like they really are thanking actual human beings for voting them as best actor or best actress. I'm yeah. curious, like we, Patrick and I have spent, you know, the past couple of months trying to watch every single nominated yeah. best picture film. We got through almost all of them. We have a few more that we still want to hit. Did you see to Leslie? I did. Yes. What did you think? I listen, I think it's a good performance, but I do think, I mean, listen, it's a good performance, but I, it is funny in the, that, you know, they, they romance the Academy, like the, the, the filtering of, by the way, she's talking about, uh, Audrea Riseborough, I believe her name is. Yeah, Andrea. Is that, Andrea, sorry, is a very, it made like $25,000 at the box office, something really low. But what happened was that friends of hers were in the industry very high up and they, they did a little grassroots campaign for her. And so people were watching this movie. I mean, I think you had like Kate Winslet, you had, I mean, just a, Moore, you even had Howard yeah, Stern Paul talking Joe. about it on yes. his show yep. because they're all kind of friends and they're like, this is a great performance. So it is a great performance, but then it goes to show you campaigning because you can complain about that. Sure. But then I would also say, 
And I think Jamie Lee Curtis gave an amazing performance, but Jamie Lee Curtis was also campaigning for this as well as Angela Bassett. So who has the better campaign? It's It used to be, you guys, it's so fascinating. It used to be so much worse in the Weinstein days mm-hmm. because Weinstein was known, like he would get those Golden Globe noms and then he would wine and dine. Like, I mean, it was just rampant. You would start rumors ju- about oh, yeah. people. Oh, it Shakespeare in Love. Was- Saving yes. Private Ryan was supposed to win and Shakespeare in Love took it and said, and it was like, there's this great book, I think it's called Down and Dirty Pictures, and it talks about the campaigns that he, I mean, Goodwill Hunting, he created Matt Damon and Ben Affleck as a concept. Right, right. And I think too, you know, uh, like the Andrea Riseborough thing, I, I have, I think it's a nuanced conversation because I do think that there were two women of color actresses that were essentially shut out from that conversation because of Andrea. The, the so, women king, the woman king and yep, Till. Till. Yeah. Yeah. So I do feel I I feel some type of way about that. But I also have to say that like Viola Davis is a very famous Oscar winning performer. She had a huge studio behind her. And I thought it was interesting that a smaller film with no marketing budget was able to secure a nomination when some some of these movies had massive million dollar marketing budgets and they still couldn't get it. I think it's a really interesting conversation to talk about, okay, how does this work? There, the, the head of the Academy was actually on a, another podcast called The Town with an entertainment reporter, um, Matt Bellany. And he said that like, because of this Andrea Riseborough nomination, they are going to be looking at the rules again. <laughs> and it's, and honestly, you think about it and it's like, yeah, because politically- the Academy probably wants these bigger studios to be happy with them. Well, also, they, I mean, you know, this is a year that was very important for film in terms of bringing people back to the theaters. And that's yep. why Top Gun and Avatar, they were acknowledged uh, very yep. heavily because they actually were successful. Is that nobody saw to Leslie still to this day? Nobody yep. has seen to Leslie. So you want people celebrating the movies that actually brought people to the th- cinema. And that's why even I got to really shout out everything everywhere all at once because I, I saw like eight or nine months ago really long time ago yeah and i remember crying and then i remember going well i think this is the best picture and it was eight or nine months ago i was like but those eight or nine months i'm like is this going to really stay in anybody's consciousness for that amount of time and ha- like they had a really tough job but the movie i think just really rocks so they could keep that uh momentum going to the to the point where they cleaned up with seven awards last night Totally. I mean, they totally swept. It was incredible to watch. A24 had a, a very, very, very good night. So I'm sure they're all celebrating today or maybe. Oh, listen, man, I'm, I'm, I'm an A24 nut. I'm part of their, Same. I'm, a, I'm part of their, I pay a monthly, like $7 fee. <laughs> so I can get, so I got a little button and they send me like a gift on my birthday and I get a little oh zine God, every two. Oh, I love, dude, I, Midsummer, Ari Aster. I love all that A24 stuff. They have a really okay. cool, they have a really good pocket because it's all in this, like, and you talk about this with makeup. Up and and uh, visual effects. It's all with the story you're telling, and mm-hmm. I think the Oscars are so great because they really. I mean, it's, sometimes it's a little uh, heavy-handed, but they're trying to tell a story as well. Brendan Fraser winning. We're telling a story of somebody that was really big in Hollywood at a certain point, and you know, he had some really bad things happen to him and to have him come back or uh, Ki Hoi Kwan, yep. uh, which I just touched me a million times. I mean, these stories you can really get behind. Even um, uh, Mich- uh, Michelle Yeoh. I mean, like yeah. what she said, you even had it on your Instagram today. The the direct quote she said of like uh, women, you, what did it say? Women, you, you Ladies, are not- Ladies, don't let anybody tell yes. you you're past your prime. yes. I mean, that's, yeah. that, these are these are great stories and messages, and it fills me with hope. And so I hope that there's little kids out there in like just you know even middle America watching this, and it gives them hope. Like that's what movies should be about. I agree. And while I do think that everybody that won last night was 110 percent deserving, I do though a part of me thinks a lot about kind of what you're saying, but the flip side of that, which is the storytelling of so and so winning an Oscar versus actually people voting based on the movies they viewed and the performance given. Because I would also argue Kate Blanchett gave the performance of her entire life in Tar. And when I watched that film, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that this was Kate Blanchett, but I couldn't even really tell. I thought she was Lydia Tar. How did she completely immerse herself 
as a conductor, I do not understand how much discipline and how much intellect you must have to be able to nail a role like that. I mean, it was insane. And, and to your point, you you can see Tar on Peacock, I believe, right now. I believe can or, you? it's, it's okay. on one of the yeah, I believe it's on one of the streaming services. I believe Peacock, but it really is. You watch that movie, and I still go, oh, I wonder what Lydia Tar is doing today. Like it's that like where you're like, oh, that's a real breathing human being. Everywhere, every, everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, amazing acting and stuff like that. But I find it, it's, I don't go around thinking about what the main character is potentially doing today. It's a very, I feel like a very story in that box. But Cape Lanchette makes you believe this is a real person that has a whole history, a whole future. And, you know, but it is one of those things, though, with Tar, I feel, feel like it's so, um, it's so collegiate. That it might have turned away certain Oscar voters and even people, just normal people, I think they turn on tar and they're like, what? What? What's going on? I mean, I think it does speak to the fact that a lot of people saw everywhere, uh, everything everywhere all at once. Like a lot of people actually like did go and see that movie or rented it in some capacity. They actually watched it. I think Tar is one of those genre films that maybe, like you said, turns off a large group of people. They don't think it's something that they're going to care about. And they don't really care about, they're like, oh, Kate Blanchett, she's won awards in the past. Like, who cares? Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. So I do yeah. think it's interesting. Like, there's a whole conversation of you're actually supposed to watch all of the movies to be able to vote on them. But I think it's now, like, in the olden days, sure, that made sense. There weren't that many movies coming out every year. Now, Last like when I went to this symposium on uh, this last Saturday. At yeah, the which I want to talk Museum. about. Explain this to what you went to. This is so, awesome. Throughout the whole week at the Academy Museum, they had these symposiums for different sectors of the Academy. And on Saturday, it ended with the hair and makeup category. So all five of the nominated teams. And came... what were the nominated? What were it was like the whale, uh, Batman. So, yep, the whale, Batman, All Quiet on the Western Front, Elvis. And uh, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And so those five teams were shortlisted um, from 10 teams uh, that were essentially like they throughout the entire year of 2022, the governors of that branch of the Academy are keeping tabs on films that they think may make it to the Oscars. They said by the end of last year, they had 305 films to go through. And so like you're watching them obviously in real time. But some people aren't. And so when you're trying to like narrow it down for people, it can be very difficult. So it kind of goes back to what I'm saying. Like it's almost impossible to ask Academy voters to watch every single film that comes out because there's just so much content now Um, and so many, which is great, but also, you know, like it's like a double edged sword. So at this symposium, I went because I'm obviously just obsessed with the makeup and hairstyling. I knew a lot of the people that were up on that stage it was like the magic of being at the Academy Museum. The first film that was shown was um, they didn't show all the films. So basically they do this thing called a bake off in February before the nominations <laughs> are uh, secured. And basically t- those 10 shortlisted films that, uh, you know, the, the the sector of the Academy thinks is going to potentially make it to the Oscars. They come, they show a seven minute reel of their work, and then they have a conversation about what went into making this film. And then from there, that category of the Academy votes and that's who gets nominated into the last five. So we watched all of the reels from the bake off. They are seven minutes. It was really, really fascinating to see what they chose to highlight. Um, all quiet. And on are the they Western highlighting front. just clips or are they highlighting the actual process that goes into? No, no, they're, well? they're taking clips from the movie and basically super cutting them. So you can see <laughs> their actual work like finished. So yeah. all quiet on the Western front uh, uh, their team, uh, from Germany, they were literally in the trenches, like in water up to their waists, working on these actors who had never performed in front of a camera in their life, making them look like they were in the middle of a war. Uh, Black Panther Wakanda forever had one of the hardest jobs in the biz, keeping people's wigs and body paint on in water, because a lot of that was filmed underwater. It was not totally CGI or digital. It was a lot of it practical. So they were in these water tanks trying to make sure that blue paint wasn't coming (laughs) off or a wig wasn't going to float off, like a lot of technical work there. The whale, obviously, they won. And Brendan Fraser, um, he came out during their panel. So, you know, the, the team of the three hair and makeup I mean, they artists, were campaigning. Like, they even had Brendan Fraser there. 
Right. Bridge. Yes. But also, you know, it was like the, 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 it, everything had already been solidified anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they weren't, this was really just for like audience fanfare, you know? Yeah. yeah, and, so, yeah. and we're at the Academy Museum. They were like, we've never done this before. We had no idea who was going to show up. Brendan Fraser comes out to support his team. And he said, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there saying that a lot of my, my, my body and my face was digital and it wasn't it was practical effects it was silicone it was it was these prosthetics that were applied to his neck to his body he said that he would literally be sweating so badly inside of this suit and these prosthetics on his face and neck they when he would sit on the couch was where which was where he was a lot of the film they had a pipe that went up his back blowing cold air on him oh. And he wore a cold vest to keep him from basically sweating off his prosthetics because, you know, the sweat would move, remove the glue. Um, so th so much work went into that. I was fascinated with the Elvis team. They were pretty awesome, um, you know, because Austin Butler obviously did a, a he gave an amazing performance and he wore a prosthetic chin, chin throughout the entire film. But I think the most interesting tidbit, which was the thing that you, I think, probably held on to was from the Batman. Yeah. And yeah. I remember when they were nominated, I was kind of shook because I'm like, Robert Pat Pattinson basically just wore like black eye makeup. Like, what are we talking about here? And then I forgot that they did Oz, who is essentially the penguin. Who is Colin why, Farrell. And that's People Colin don't Farrell. even know, realize that's Colin no, Farrell. I have like, no idea. It's, it's, it is, I, I've never seen makeup that has made me forget that this is an actual person that I've watched on film for 20 years. It's that, and his performance was amazing as well. But I was like, blown away when I saw that makeup. Like, you really believe that's a dude. Yeah, and when they hired him, he had no idea that he was going to be getting into this much prosthesis. Like, he was not made aware. And he came out during his panel. So it was like his team... Um, and he came out and everyone was like, absolutely losing it. They're like, Zaddy's here. But one thing, so, <laughs> so the, the team that did this, their name is, um, one's Mike Marino, one's Mike Fontaine, Mike and Mike work together all the time. Um, Mike Marino runs a pros, uh, like a special effects company called, uh, pro Ren FX. He does Heidi Klum every single year for her Halloween parties. Yes. He did the worm this year yes. that you, you mentioned in your, yeah. And he does, he's done literally like any fabulous prosthetic in the last 10 years he's done it. But he, he told the story about how Colin has an amazing face for prosthetics because it is so symmetrical and so beautiful. Oh, I bet, right? <laughs> so, he has, so they have a lot of room and it was funny. He was like blushing um, and he's like, come on now. But like he, he did an amazing job. And then the, the, I think the key tidbit that I thought was just, it really tr truly shows what artists are behind the scenes is you know on oz's face half of it's scarred and his yeah, nose in yeah. general kind of has like a little beak tip at the end it yeah. kind of like folds over but the side that's scarred he made it to look like a beak from the side as well so yeah, there's you like highlight a it in your story in you were yeah it's so and that's the kind of stuff and i'm like damn this stuff is so layered this is you can really geek out on this stuff and the cool thing you guys uh they are doing, and they're already filming this, a Penguin spinoff TV series for HBO Max, and they started filming a couple weeks ago. Did they mention anything about that? They didn't mention it, only um, they, they showed some images and they brought it up, and, and this is like obviously super topical because I had seen all those paparazzi photos, like one of the big headlines was, you're not going to believe what actor is underneath this makeup. Yeah. And it yeah, was yeah, Colin yeah. Farrell and everyone was losing it because they're filming in New York, so he's yeah. just like kind of running around, you know, doing this, but... Um, it was really cool. And I think if anybody does get the opportunity to go to these symposiums or even just visit the Academy Museum, they totally should because it is a really, really fascinating experience. Yeah, I, I just I loved it. And I love people like you that actually are able to communicate effectively why we should be excited about these things, why the magic of the movies is still there. And I feel like we've been indoors for so many years and I was like, oh, man. I, I talk about this so many times in the last year of of being really scared that we that the movie theaters will not exist one day that we mm -hmm. will get to a time where and and it's such a special experience and it always has been for me and I don't mean that things can't change and you know but I just think it would be such a shame when we have such artistry happening. And not to say that is not done on TV as well. You've uh, focused the work of Euphoria. You focused the work. I mean, there's great work being done everywhere. Right. But I think I I, I think there should be. The magic of the movies, I want to always be there in some form. And last night brought a little bit of that magic or actually maybe just made me feel a little bit better of like, okay, I think we, 
you know, we might be good. We have so many people working hard on these these things. This is art. Totally. And we need to just be able to have these uh, films bring people together in a theater. I went to see Scream uh, on Friday night. Oh, I want to see that so bad. Jam-packed theater. It was the best way to see it because everybody was screaming. Everybody was like commenting when things were happening. And it, you felt like you were a part of something. You felt like a connection to other people, even though they may have been strangers. So I do we think- We talked about that last time because you were about to see Megan. Do you think Megan's going to be nominated for an Oscar next season for bringing <laughs> people back to the- <laughs> Oh my it's god! Great. I mean, maybe maybe special <laughs> effects and makeup. You don't know. Stunt work. Megan. I don't know. Like like. By the way, there were no Megan night. jokes last night. We had cocaine bear jokes, but no Megan jokes oh last gosh. night. I was wondering what Elizabeth Banks. I was like, girl, you should have given up this uh this presenting role with your voice. Like it was oh, like man. hard for me to listen to her. I wonder. On what top happened. of her tripping and the bear already kind of being like. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, the voice, I was like, oh man, this is just a mess. But she directed Cocaine Bear, so of course I know. she loves that. Um, a couple of weird things about the awards away. Like, I I thought it was great. I thought it was weird that we did a Little Mermaid trailer because ABC owns Disney, or Disney owns ABC, and we had a full Little Mermaid trailer in the middle of the Oscars on stage. I thought that was kind of a weird moment of corporate synergy that I didn't necessarily love. Um, the other thing that I was stands out, like we Jamie Lee Curtis won. And we, uh, what I read online, you know, is that Angela Bassett, you know, just didn't seem, she wasn't happy for Jamie Lee. And I'm like, wait a sec, can't we be disappointed when we don't win something? Like, why? Right. I mean, like, like a lot of like, I, I'm sure she's not pissed at Jamie Lee Curtis, but like she was being promoted as the winner in so many uh, places and online. I had her and, winning. I had her winning. Yeah, I am, I, I am too. truly shocked. Uh, listen, Jamie Lee Curtis is Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, she obviously campaigned really hard for that that role. I, yeah, Dorit helped her a lot too, I think, with yeah. <laughs> uh, this from Beverly Hills. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I think, you know, uh, if if anybody was going to get, you know, Stephanie Hsu, I think, deserved it uh, for her role in that film more so than Jamie Lee. I was actually surprised she even got a nomination for that role. I didn't see it as being as... You know, you know, there was a lot of discussion about Stephanie Hsu not being nominated for other awards, uh, you know, shows uh, except for the Oscars. And I thought that was great. And I kind of try to think about the maybe dynamics behind that. Like, perhaps people think Jamie Lee Curtis may not get another role like this or another I think, opportunity to win. I think it's also win. an honor, honoring of her, uh, her lineage. I mean, she always jokes about Nepo baby, but I mean, you're coming from, uh, you know, uh, father's Tony Curtis and, yep. and mom's Vivian, Vivian Lee, Vivian Lee. Is that right? V- 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 yeah. Vivian v- Lee. Yeah. Or, uh, sorry. Um, Janet Lee. Janet and, Lee. Sorry. Oh yeah. And I think, you know, it's like, so you do have to think about like any award show is political. Like, let's just be real. But I do think, you know, I was shocked. I thought Angela was going to win. Um, I'm not, su- I would have probably, I mean, honestly, I would have been kind of like, but I, I, then again, I maybe it's like a testament to people think that, that Angela Bassett will probably be back there nominated again. And I'm maybe sh- Jamie and Lee way, won't. Like, I'm not trying to be shady, but like, no, maybe no, that's I mean, kind of the at, dynamic. If you look at- if you look at Jamie Lee's movie career, you know, she's had a very successful movie career, but not a lot of films that were Oscar worthy. Um, but, but Angela Bassett has been doing stellar. I mean, like I always thought she should have won it for Tina Turner way back in the day. for right. What's love got to do with it. And so right. this, they said was a makeup for that. And that's why she potentially should have won last night. But once again, though, I mean, she did give a great performance in Wakanda Forever, but also I think when you, this is one of the first um, awards ever nominated for a Marvel movie in terms okay, of Okay, that's the other part of this. I think yeah. the Academy is very stuffy, and I think a lot of people did not want to give an award to a Marvel movie in that respect. Like, I just think that a lot of people get, put their nose up in the air and they don't really care. They don't want to see any type of superhero winning one of the big four or the, big The five. only exception, you guys, and this is because I think of another story in an honoring was Heath Ledger with The Dark Knight. He had passed away and he won for The Joker. Now, that was an amazing performance and it was such a successful movie, but I, I would be, I would think he would, I, I, I think it, he might not have won if he unfortunately hadn't have passed away. Do you? Uh, I think it was amazing work. I feel like, I feel like that movie though, in particular did not come off as like a superhero movie. You know what oh, I mean? Oh no. Yeah. Chris Nolan like knocked it. Nobody Chris Nolan thinks of it like a, a superhero. Put it in a movie. real world. 
He put and it in he, the real world. Yeah. He was undeniably great in that movie. I yeah. think and and nobody nobody could question how incredible he was in that movie. Yeah, like Jared Leto didn't get nominated for his portrayal of the Joker Correct. five years later, you know. Correct. Correct. So I do think there's so many factors at play. The the, you know, the, the story as you mentioned goes into it. The marvel of it all goes into it. Will this person have another opportunity? We don't know. Like I think a lot of it play there's a lot more that plays into it than just performance. Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, listen, I'm a dude that shops at Old Navy. I don't uh, have a high uh, bar for fashion. But as somebody that that does study these things, makeup, fashion, all that stuff, I kept hearing on the pre-show, I forgot which channel I was watching, of like, what story are you telling with your, your outfit tonight? Uh, can you walk us through anything that moved you in terms of uh, fashion or makeup just for the actual awards for people? I don't dressing? know if it actually moved me at all, but I felt like I saw a lot of naked people. Like there was a lot of people <laughs> that were naked and it wasn't even like at the actual Finally, awards, my but... suggestion got taken. This is amazing. <laughs> but like Lady Gaga's entire butt was out, like for the most part. She had butt Wait, cleavage. tell me. What... <laughs> and then Lady Gaga for her performance changes, changes wipes all of her makeup off, changes yep. into like cut off black jeans and like a t-shirt shirt and she gives like a speech about believing in yourself which is great but that was kind of odd but I was like wow that's weird it was a very weird I think she wanted it to be like a stripped down like I don't need to do all of this highfalutin stuff to get people to like listen to my music type of thing which I totally get and she doesn't and she's an Oscar winner like she's won an Oscar she's won an Oscar for song of the year or whatever anyway so it's like like she she She's like, I'm here. I'm here to perform. I'm here to honor this movie that obviously got people's butts back in the theater. Um, I really did want something a little bit more theatrical from her. That's what we know her for. Like, yeah. I would have loved, like, like that song is so, um, it's so, like, grand. And I wanted, like, Ta-na! like I just wanted, like, I wanted music. her to jump in yes. like she did in the Super Bowl. I wanted, yes. I want, but I still am holding on to, like, what was it, four years ago? It was before the pandemic when uh, Star is Born, and she sang with Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper all of a sudden got up out of the audience and came right. to the piano, and I was like, I, I want Bradley, like, fuck, let Bradley Cooper sing it with her. I want the magic of a Star is Born back. Right, and you know what? <laughs> there was speculation that Tom Cruise was going to deliver the uh, Best Actress Roll, uh, yeah, uh, he award. didn't show up last night. He did not show up, which I was uh, like, my boyfriend and I looked at each other when Jimmy said that he didn't, he wasn't going to be there. Because I'm like, how? Like, you would think that he would show up. But... He's shown up for everything. He was at the Producers Guild Awards. He was honored there. Yep. He's shown up. And, and I would think he would come just to take some victory laps on... You know, there's such goodwill for Tom Cruise, even with all the Scientology stuff. There right. is such goodwill for him in Hollywood circles right now mm-hmm. that I thought he would have shown up for a victory lapse. I heard, so he's filming Mission Impossible 7 and 8 back to back. So oh, they wow. said he's over there. But then I read something today, and you never know what to believe with this stuff, is that he didn't want an awkward uh, encounter with Nicole Kidman on the red carpet. But I just, I think his team would have been able to protect anything like that from happening. Listen, if they can protect Vanessa Hudgens from interviewing Austin Butler, Austin Butler? then Wait, they can. Did you see that thing today with the, I like, was Vanessa shaking. Hudgens' awkward encounter with Austin Butler? And Vanessa Hudgens just walks by him. There walking wasn't... by. <laughs> and I Austin was... Butler looks. I was shaking. I was like, I need. <laughs> I would have loved if they could have just been amicable and interviewed each other. But I understand why they don't do that stuff. Because you yeah. don't want the headline, especially if you're Austin Butler, to be just that he was interviewed by his ex. Like it would, you don't want that to overshadow the fact that he was nominated. You know what and I mean? And you guys, if you don't know, you if you don't know, Vanessa Hudgens and Austin Butler used to date. There's a lot of stuff that, like, said he took care of them, would pay for everything. She he lived at her place, and so. It was, and he even, I think she even championed him getting the Elvis role. So she it was very interesting. She told him that he should play Elvis. I think the thing that always like kind of rubs me the wrong way is when people are like, she's the one that made him Elvis in the first place. I'm like, no, that man got that role on his own accord. He didn't, it was great. he didn't, she didn't hold his hand in the, you know, audition while he was trying to be Elvis. She basically just gave him some encouragement and said, hey, you should like look into this. And then there, here we are. I think too. She's doing just fine. She's now engaged. Like everyone needs to leave them alone. They're they're they've moved on. They the live their I, they live their life I, together. <laughs> I love about Oscar nights though is that even that picture that we're talking about, you guys. I love that Sharon Stone's right next to Austin Butler. Right. And she's just like has no clue what's going no. on. She's like, no. <laughs> you know, and, and, I'm like, and 
Austin and Vanessa didn't even know what's going on. She's, no. she's just walking to a car. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Kirby, I do think, listen, I do think she, come on. You know, I am always acutely aware when celebrities are around me. Okay, that's And true. I'm sorry, you would have had so many people taking photos of Austin Butler already. She could have walked behind. She could have, and I'm not saying she did it for attention, but I am saying that she know she had to have well, known he was there. Well, she did look up at him. She did look up at him, and then he didn't look he was at like, her until she passed. So, very interesting. I mean, well, okay, so if we're going to talk about red carpet uh, yeah. reporting, did you see the Ashley Graham, Hugh Grant thing? You focused on this as well. And uh, there, Hugh, but this is Hugh Grant has done this stuffy uh, British bit where he says, you know, just, I didn't want to really be, you know, it's like, I, that is very, I've seen who Hugh Grant do that. I mean, Hugh Grant even did a form of this when he was busted with that, the, uh, the, the, the prostitute a long time ago on the Jay Leno show. Uh, he's an asshole. He's a British, like that's, he has that asshole British humor. Not every Brit has that humor, but he does. But it is really weird when it's like, oh man, that's somebody that doesn't potentially know your career and know your bit. And like, uh, it's just gross. And in retrospect, and I'm glad the internet has come to save her. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, listen, do I think Ashley Graham is the strongest interviewer? No, I, I I also think none of the people on those networks are. No. No, I, I, I really would love for them to get like actual get you credentials. This is what I do. This is what I people get. But to get like this is what I like or like. I just don't like and no a shade of Vanessa Hudgens or no. in like all the E crew. But it is weird. It's like guys, you just want to have work. Like we all want to have work, but it's like you you can tell that you didn't grow up grow up like loving right. movies. You didn't grow like up like, you liked them, but you didn't like have somebody that can pull out weird facts out of the back of their pocket, you know. And and that's my thing. It it makes it makes the red carpet less fun. Like Joan Rivers, when she used to do it, mm. she didn't even know, but she had her own take on it. She's like, I'm totally. gonna make fun. I'm gonna that's a take. These people are all homogenized examples of the same thing again and again. And it's the same interview over and over. It's nothing new and nothing different. And that's why people are starting to get bored. And I think that's why a lot of people were like kind of uh, enamored with this interview between Ashley and Hugh, because a lot of people were like, well, it wasn't a sanitized interview. He was like clearly like, like calling her on the fact that she didn't really know what she was talking about. And you need to be better prepared if you're an entertainment reporter. And I'm like, well, let me remind you that she's not an entertainment reporter. She is a model and, you know, hosts some things from time to time. She probably is not as immersed in this world as maybe an actual journalist or reporter is. But at the same time, you don't have like, he went for the jugular. He saw yeah, he she was stumbling not to do that. and he could give her, extend her some grace versus being just completely rude. A lot of people were like, like you said, British humor. And that's just how we are. No, it's no, you're not. I know plenty of British people that are not that he, he was not decent to her that night. And no, by the way, it, he's not required to do press. He did not even have to do it. That, the, you know, <laughs> There, this isn't Frost Nixon on the red carpet. This is like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is just like by the by, paint by numbers. He could have played along. He was in a pissy mood, obviously, and right. it made him in the end look bad. He now, did. when he presented with Andy McDowell, he he, you know, was very humorous. Turned British humor of like, charm. I look, I look like a scrotum, you know, and everybody laughed, and it was you know a little Hugh Grant moment. But it is funny. It's like there is a give and take in Hollywood, and like just because you're sick of an aspect of Hollywood. Um, that, you know, is not about the art or about, you know, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Like you said, you can choose to play this game or not. You can walk right by, you can tell your PR team, I'm not in the mood. Like right. I, I, it's real simple. And I, I think he, he's, I bet she gets a, a, an apology from Hugh Grant at some point this week. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Honestly, like he probably just doesn't give a flying ass. Wait, were I, you, were you insinuating somebody was rude to you? I was trying to decipher. Oh, Yes, Ryan. So yeah, what was a couple the- of weeks ago, I was like, I was kind of vindicated in a way because when I, I was on the red carpet for the Globes and I, I don't want to give, I don't want to say anything. Okay. But I will just say there, my first interview went so terribly wrong <laughs> oh, no. um, and not by any fault of my own. This person was horrible and i have witnesses my producer felt the same way and we were deeply 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 upset by this because this was like the number one person we wanted to interview it was not jennifer coolidge okay so like no she's a saint she's an angel people kept on thinking it was jennifer coolidge um it was not 
after that, I, I truly have been seeing some things about this person where I'm like, everybody is, is just attributing this to the fact that they are this way because of who they are. But I think we may in the coming weeks or months actually see that this person just is not a nice person. Um, and anyway, so people thought that when I was posting about Hugh, that they thought they were like, oh, I'm, I'm convinced that this is who you were talking about a couple weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, Hugh Grant wouldn't be the number one person you'd want to talk to at this point. Correct, Ryan, 100%, A. And B, it was not, uh, he was not even at the Golden Globes. So um, it was, yeah, people kept on messaging me that I had to kind of be like, it was not him. It was not well, him. Well, I mean, listen, Eddie Murphy's going to act that way regardless. You right. gotta, so you're admitting it's Eddie Murphy. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> listen, here's the thing about like Eddie Murphy or it's, it's the same thing about, um, you know, Hugh Grant. Like I would actually have loved to have been in that situation with Hugh Grant. But like, Hugh, what makes you happy these days? Like what? What are you excited about? I mean, like, no, this, I mean, this is like old. This is like old guard uh, for you. Like what? Uh, what, is, what is making you happy? You know, you know what I would do? I'd be like, Hugh, we are at the Dolby Theater tonight, nary a mile from where you got picked up with a prostitute <laughs> so long ago. You've managed to suffer the slings and arrows of your career, and you're back on top. What does it right. feel like to be here tonight? Right. You know? Hey, uh, Hugh, you know this area pretty well, right? Right? Like, you're pretty familiar with this, right? Um, but yeah, it's like- Wait, did that also, did that throw you off for the rest of the Globes? Because you said it was your first one. How do you, as uh, you know, as somebody that is passionate about this and this is your job, how do you, you know, remain your focus, like stay focused and not be uh, fearful of the remaining uh, red carpet at that point? I mean, point? you really just don't have a choice. Like people are coming right and left. Like you just have to say, okay, like look at my producer. I was also there with the, my, um, with a, the, the head of social for InStyle. And we all kind of looked at each other and we all took a deep breath and they said, move it along. Up yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. Who's next? Yeah. And then you're just go you're going. And you luckily I I was able to forget about it in the moment because we had so many amazing interviews that night. Um, but afterwards I just could not stop thinking about it. And the only reason I even brought it up on my page was because I had a close friend who was also on that carpet post to friends only on TikTok and said, I just want y'all to know that this person was horrible to me on the Globe's oh, red carpet. Man. And I said, I need you to call me immediately because I, I kept in my head thinking I did something that set this person off in the way that they did go off. And she was like, no, she, this person was the exact same way to everybody on that carpet. So uh, needless That's to say, I felt, I felt vindicated. <laughs> Um, okay. So, uh, magical night. Uh, I'm trying to think if there were any other standouts in terms of, uh, even costuming. The Vanity Fair thing is funny. I, like I said, I just, I like watching everybody walk in. It was the Elton John fundraiser or the Vanity Fair party. Right. Elton John fundraiser had a lot of the Beverly Hills housewives. Lisa yep. Renna got to go again. Thank God. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure she paid for her own ticket this time. Uh, there is not, I mean, I'm, I'm curious for more like things from behind the scenes at these parties. I always like Same. to hear the rumors. Justin Bieber, by the way, wore a blanket. He wore a blanket. I don't know if you know it. I, I, I'm not joking. He wore a little blanket. I saw, and he, I, saw. I was like, is he is he is in his Brian Wilson phase? Like, where is like he he see like man? You don't have to go to these things. Like, it's, I know you've been famous for so long. If this doesn't if this isn't your bliss, you don't have to go. Like Haley can go with her friends. You know, right? I always think about Haley because she looks so stunning and she's always in these amazing amazing outfits. And then I kind of want him to be able to match her in a way. But he always kind of just goes. Out of left field. Yeah. Could you imagine that going to like, hey, what are you going to wear tonight? Uh, this blanket. Uh, okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, it's going to be one of those nights. Now, you were talking about the last time you were talking about all the amazing skincare and stuff like that you cover on Los Angeles. And it is so funny because Selena and Haley both have skincare that you actually like. Uh, yes. Skincare products. But isn't it weird, though, when they, these people have actual products that are actually good and then we get stuck in the muck and mire of... Uh, who's saying what on what about so, like on social media. And I just always find that funny because I'm like, dude, you guys all have like actual talents and stuff like that. Like, why why are we in this at all? Like, Kylie, no. what are you doing? Like, you guys are all rich and beautiful and have good products. Like, everybody stop. This is how I feel. I feel that um, Selena fans are, and not, not even Selena fans, Selena stands are extremely aggressive. They're on the same level as like an extremist Britney Spears fan. And like to this day, I, if I comment on 
like Haley's posts, like can say like gorgeous or whatever, I will get like 25 comments from Selena fans going Jelena forever or, uh, you know, Selena's great or whatever, or, you know, um, like I commented on Haley's photo recently. I thought she looked cute. And I just said gorgeous. And someone responded, yeah, but she has a flat butt though. And I responded kind of like your personality. Oh! And then she wrote back. <laughs> and then she wrote back. I just prefer Selena Gomez. And I wrote back. Cool. I actually like them both. And I think the, the missing thing here is that there is no. You're either one side or the other. I can like Selena Gomez. I can also like Haley Bieber. They, they are two both beautiful, smart women who have successful beauty brands. And I'm like, why can't we just. Like, truly, I'm not trying to mean girls it, but why can't everything be like rainbows and butterflies and like everybody just get along? Well, well, and I listen, I understand life finds a way. Everybody, you know, no matter if you're a celebrity or not, you have your own little things happening. Right. But it is funny. Like if like I, if the Jelena forever cracks me up. Like if I genuinely I genuinely like Selena and I'm I'm thankful she's not with Justin Bieber. I don't think it would be great to be with Justin Bieber. I think you're probably better well off. But it is interesting, though. I, I, I'm using this as a segue here because so you have. Two women that dated this man, one is married to this man, and yet we have the two women, uh, you know, trading barbs. They're not even trading barbs. Their fan base is trading barbs. Would you say this is not unlike a certain scandal where, you know, this man has, or these men on Vanderpump Rules, you know, Schwartz first in this season, and now we're finding out with Sandoval, you know, they're the ones that are messing up on such a huge level Yet, and by the way, I am I really do not care for Rachel Raquel at all anymore. And I'm allowed to say bold, uh, mean opinions. You're more professional than I am. But I, I don't like her either. But I do say, like, what Ariana said a couple episodes ago is that why, uh, you know, why are you guys fighting when Schwartz is right over there and nothing ever happens to him? He just, like, ah, oh, shucks his way through things. Totally. And it's fascinating to me. What was your... I mean, first off, I know you're friends with Katie. I know, and we've talked about, and I, listen, I've, I, I really, I, I was talking about her on a Patreon this week. I just like the, the decision she had to make for herself is one of the bravest decisions that was not on camera. And she said, listen, I care about my own happiness. And that's something that you guys don't understand if you haven't been through a divorce or like, you know, you've been through breakups and stuff like that. But to make that decision is one of the most difficult decisions you have to make because he wouldn't have made it. And she mm. would have, you know, I think there would have been such a, a sea of misery for the rest of both of their lives. And she did. And that's a hard decision. And we see that people even like Sandoval are not able to make hard decisions. They, they would rather cheat and lie and do all of these things than making hard decisions and having hard conversations. And I thought that's what Katie should be celebrated for. And I don't want to ever forget her this season with all of the stuff that is now coming out about Sandoval. Totally. I think that honestly, the, the shorts of it all like really does play in to the scandal. And I also think that that's why I've been so much like when I post about it, I'm like justice for Ariana and Katie because Ariana, even like when Raquel tells Katie about how she went to Schwartz and asked him to made yeah. out like girl, Katie, I had no idea you had it in you. Exactly. And I felt like that was such a weird response to have for your friend and future business partner or current business partner who is clearly struggling. Um, and having a really hard time with this. And I'm glad that Katie has kind of let her guard come down and like has been crying. Cause I feel like, I, I don't think that she's doing it for sympathy. I think she's like at her breaking point, but I do think it is garnering sympathy from people because they're like, oh shit, she actually does have feelings. Cause she has been so hardcore and like- And has she's had, had a point. She's yes. been right. This, I mean, like, and she's had a point. And that's yes. what's I think interesting is that now we're catching up to a lot of the things. And I think behavior can come also from what your significant other is almost inspiring in you. And totally. like, listen, I don't need everybody to be warm and fuzzy and happy people. I know I am not. I don't need that from people. I don't, you know, but I, I think even in that moment, what Katie just said, I just remember it. She was just like, it's just too much. It's just too much. And she yeah. was like looking down. And by, I, I said on Mon Monday's show, I was like, man, I still think it's amazing she didn't hop over the table and just strangle Raquel. No, no. You know? like, I thought that who would say so that? much. Who would say that to somebody? I thought it showed so much restraint on Katie's part, for sure. I also think that Katie has never been wrong. I've been doing a rewatch, especially because of the 10 um, 
the 10 year anniversary of the show, like 10 yeah. seasons. I did a rewatch before this season started and rewatching all of this. Katie has truly always laid her cards out on the table and been very upfront with everyone. And a lot of the comments online are Katie's always been miserable. That yeah, is a so response. That, yeah. that is a response to her relationship and how she was treated, not only by Schwartz, but other people in her life. Stassi was horrible to her at one point. Like, there are so many factors that go into this, but also, uh, you know, and I mentioned this on the last time I was on, Katie is a very grounded person that might not come off as, you know, fun and frilly. As yeah, it doesn't play as fun to. as DJ James Kennedy openly cheating and then like still saying like things are like, I can't believe I'm being treated like this. And it's like, <laughs> right. That is, by the way, that is fun and hysterical to watch. Probably not a great person to be with or not ever in be, real life, you know, like not like probably not great in so many ways. But yeah, that's like one of the greatest sins that you can have on TV at all is not being entertaining, not being like even Jax Taylor is celebrated for his bad behavior. Even so we can say like people like Katie and Ariana, we can point to them and like these people have not had insane behavior on the show. No. And they've almost been sometimes punished for it, which I find an interesting idea. Agreed. And Tom Sandoval is has always been self-righteous. I, I have found him to be a, a fascinating character for sure. But like, I, I mean, even think... coming from a makeup background, you've got to be fascinated with Tom Sandoval. Come on. He's, I wrote what a he's story. done for stage makeup. Ryan, I wrote a story about him when I was at Pop Sugar. I wrote a story that's literally like Tom Sandoval could be a beauty editor. And I interviewed him and he gave me his entire beauty regimen. He knew he was so proficient in skincare and makeup and hair care. Like, He's a very charming guy. And I think that when you're rewatching the 10 seasons, the one takeaway is that Tom does not know how to, Tom Sandoval does not know how to end a relationship without cheating. He has cheated on every single person that he has been with in this show. It's almost like he uses that. Like it's, it's like it's his escape that, route. Well, that's the thing too, is that like, how did he think this was going to end? And it's almost like, I don't think he planted the phone falling out of his pot. I don't think he meant for that to happen, but no. I think potentially he was becoming so brazen with it in certain ways that he it was going to come out at some point. I think in his head, he was like, oh, I'll do it after the reunion. But like, this was just a mess. I mean, th this made it no. so much messier. And also for somebody that you love, even as a friend, this is mm -hmm. not how you would... Um, humiliate them in so many ways. And by the way, it's kind of backfiring because I think we all, you know, are celebrating uh, Ariana and all of these things, but it's still so embarrassing on so many levels because I know she was so trusting. All of these ladies are with their boy, like letting, letting Sandoval just go out like every night. Like, yeah, you got it for your bar. Like just let, like just letting him fly his freak flag out there uh, proudly. And she would just let that happen. And now, you know, I wonder if she's like, Oh God! I what what the what the f? Yeah, because you would think that you would notice. Like I think that's what I, the people are constantly th like mentioning is how would she not notice if he was with Raquel or whatever? And I'm like, this man owns two bars. Like she probably thought he was at one of these restaurants while he was with Raquel. Even I, I you know, we read the thing about apparently she was staying at their house at one point and he like sneaked into the guest room, like really. Well, I don't know about stuff. the sneaking into the guest room, but I do know she was staying over. I mean, like I do know like they, they, I mean, and not just Tom, like Ariana was like so supportive of her. Like, I mean, that's the point of like, it just really weirds me out. And I keep going like, I pray to God that you just go, listen, I'm stupid because like the diabolical part of it is just, if you if you're not extremely idiotic, it just means you're potentially full blown evil, and that to me is scarier than being stupid. No, no, I agree. I think either I so I think that people do give her the benefit of the doubt because of how she's portrayed on the show, but I think that this season people are starting to see the characteristics that she possesses that make it seem like she's way she's. Uh, I do think she's dumb, but I don't think that she is uh ignorant to her behavior and like what she's actually doing and a lot of people are like like nick vial do you follow him no but i know of nick yeah so he has that popular vial files vial podcast files. and he did a clip out where he was saying that tom sandoval essentially like seduced raquel and you know raquel is gonna have to figure out how to break the chain because she's basically like being coerced into this relationship with him blah 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 i'm like 
She is 28 years old. She is 28 years That's what, old. Like, we need to stop treating her like, in, in fact, I think that was on the episode this week uh, by Katie's friend. Uh, it's like, we need to, you know, Everybody Christina treats Kelly, her like yeah. Christina. Everybody treats her like a baby, and that's an insult to babies. Yes. The, 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 the the two thoughts I've, I had was that I remember when I moved from Kansas to Arizona, freshman year of high school. I didn't know anybody, and I found the drama department, and that and my life was transformed. But like basically. <laughs> I hung out with all seniors. Those are the people that took me under their wing. And they used to just be, I just remember, and at the time I really was super innocent, but they got such a kick out of me not knowing. I came from Kansas. I know uh, they got such a kick out of me not knowing anything. And like, they, you know, would drive me places and they're like, Oh yeah, you, you don't even have your license for another couple of years. They got a real kick that I was like this young kid that didn't know anything that hung out with them. And I remember that. And I just thought about that. Like, there is this element, I think Raquel, Rachel, whatever, leaned into where she was like, yeah, I don't know anything. Teach me everything. And I think for somebody like Sandoval from even being around him, he gets so, such a like dude boner for people that need him, for people that need like, help. Yeah. or you're like, or let me show you how to do this. And like, Ariana like knows how to do things herself, you know, and is not like I need, you know, but I was even thinking about like, I remember going out to karaoke with Tom like years ago, like year before the pandemic. And it always cracked me up because he was so passionate about karaoke. He was so into it, <laughs> so into it. And like, I remember like, but he had, he had like a to do for everything. Like you just said about his beauty re regime. Yeah. Uh, he was trying to teach me how to talk to women and he was like, here's what you do, dude. Like, you know, like you, you go up, you know, like, and you, just, you, you go at him with the, from the side, you go like side to side. And then you <laughs> lean in like, the, like he had, I'm like, I don't have anything like this. I don't have a, like, oh, he's like, yeah, he's like, and also he's like the, you know, the date you want to do is you want to do a date where her best friends are around because they'll tell you the real deal. Like they'll like, he had like all of these like tips thought out. And I remember going, man, he should write a book on date. I'm like, also I'm an idiot, you guys. But I was like, wow, <laughs> he has, cause I had no, I have no like takes on this is how you talk to somebody. But he had all of it. He's like, yeah, man, like you got to Like, this is what you do. This is what you do. And I was just like, oh, what a great guy. What a great guy. And what a help. And I, and the other thing that's funny I keep thinking about is everybody keeps posting that photo of him on or Raquel on his shoulders at like a music at like Life is Beautiful. Oh, and I was yeah. At, I, I went to Coachella with all of them last April. And the thing I will say, like, that's a really damning photo. But I will say this, and I'm not defending Tom at all. Like Tom offered, like Tom wanted to put me on his shoulders. And I'm right. way heavier than Tom. Tom was putting everybody on his shoulders. Like he's like that guy, like, let's all get into this. And I really love people like that. But then on the flip side of that, I think, you know, he got, uh, I think there was a mutual seduction thing happening where Agreed. she was stroking Sandoval's ego and he loves that. Yep. And she was thinking, not stars in her eyes, but she was like, the, the, you know, she's a very, she seems like a very lost person, you know? I think she's a very lost person. She doesn't know who she is. And not to mention... She's also been on the show for like five years. I mean, people, I people, people forget that too. write her off as being like this new character. She's new, relatively speaking, but she knows how reality television works. She, I mean, now she's living in a studio apartment because like James used to facilitate her entire lifestyle. And I think she's probably thinking, okay, how do I maintain my income by staying on this show? Because technically she wouldn't have to be on the show. James is the number one guy essentially in that that relationship, you know what I mean? So and Sandoval, yeah, Sandoval is a lot better. I'm sure a lot nicer to be around than DJ James Kennedy for Raquel. I think there's a lot of things reasons. that Raquel probably had a real big crush on Sandoval. And, um, and I, by the way, I think a lot of the cast, like towards the end of the season, potentially see that it seems like she has a schoolgirl crush on him. Um, we'll see how that plays out. But the Schwartz thing, I don't believe the Schwartz thing was a cover up for that. I mean, no. I think. I think she was also in a place where she was like just making out with a lot of people. Right. And I agree. And, uh, I don't know. So it's just wild. I mean, are, are you going to watch the rest of the season? You're going to watch, right? Oh, you 100%. Gotta... I watch every, every uh, Wednesday, but I will say this. I talked to Katie and uh, a lot of people are speculating that the editors are going to go through and try to like change yeah. episodes yeah. to kind of manufacture them a little bit more. She said point blank that there are some things that are going to happen this season that they do not need to add because uh, yeah. it's it's like she's like looking back. It's very apparent 
that something was going on, but we all just like did not like there. Apparently there's speculation at some point, I think. And I don't know if that actually makes there, it to the show. Well, but there, no, is, there is. If you, if the, the, the trailer has a scene with, I think Sheena to Sandoval of like, uh, somebody said you're in an open relationship and yes. to Sandoval. So that scene, but then Ariana shot that down immediately on Twitter and said, we are not in an open relationship. But I was, yeah. I just keep telling the audience, I think he probably was doing some weird shit and somewhere along the way might've told somebody that just yep. to get people off his back. And it just totally. went, it filtered their way. Uh, but I did hear about the editing thing. Even Andy said, I think today he said this Wednesday's episode, you're going to think we went back and re-edited it, but we absolutely did not. I guess there's mm-hmm. a, a scene between Lala and, um, Raquel, Katie, and Christina, I believe. And yes. there's a lot of things said. And I think we saw a little bit of it in the trailer, but he's like, you're going to think we re edited it. And I've heard from behind the scenes people of the no re editing. If anything, they're going to do that one episode. And I did hear that potentially other people are sending footage that they've had over the last year of like behind, the, like not like, I mean, just like camera footage. Right. So, who knows? Maybe some some stuff like that will get thrown in at a certain point. Because we know last we're getting episode. an extra episode. We know we're getting something. Like we know we're getting an additional. Why don't episode. they just? I mean, it's going to be a pain in the ass. But why don't they just keep filming? There's so no, much truly. going on right now. That's what I'm Season saying. Season eleven starts now. You have a potential like hearing in two weeks with Rachel and right. Sheena. Right. So what well, do you, you do? Think special th- effects makeup. Do you think that was special effects? Makeup? Oh my god! Do I don't even know what happened. Listen, like I do think like. Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And Sheena's trying to say that she did not do anything to Raquel. I don't think that you can fake some of those injuries that Raquel had. Some people were like saying that Raquel, like there's photo evidence that she did not have this on her face. But like it was the only evidence, like the only reason they say that is because apparently she was wearing like the same exact outfit on the plane. And I'm like, she could have just have a, an airport outfit where she wears the exact. Well, she same looks thing. like she. Well, she's look. She looks like, and there was a bunch of photos that looked like she did have like a kind of a tendency to have a, a darker eye under one of the eyes. Uh huh. But the thing that I didn't get was how she would get the scratch. Right. But then I was thinking of like, and I heard from like you know who knows what, I, but I heard there was a hard shove. I didn't hear there was a hit. But okay. the thing was like, even if you look at Sheena's talons, like how would you make a fist? Like I don't know. You have vet lung nails. Can you still yeah. make a good fist? With with large talons. I mean, you would probably hurt yourself. I mean, you wouldn't or, even look or, at. Wait, wait. My thing is now just even doing this physically is that what if the talent here she tried to hit and the nail went in her stabbed her right in the there face. instead of a hit, maybe it stabbed right there. What are your thoughts on this? I know we're like at an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're. So I'm, I'm gonna let you go in a sec. Yeah, we can wrap this up because I know we've been talking everybody's ear off. But what do you think about this restraining order? Do you think that was Raquel's effort to have to avoid the reunion that's supposed to be filming soon? I don't think so. Um, I think I don't I don't I don't think so. Um, I think she was I mean, it's w- weird because those and you've talked about some of the apologies on your page is uh, I think, you know, it was weird. She's like she says, I am not a victim in this mm. in, one, in one of her apologies. But then it's weird because then, we, you know, it does present her as a victim in terms of Sheena. Also, I just don't think, like, I'm scared of Sheena in, like, different ways, but not physically scared of Sheena. Like, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not like, physically scared of you Sheena. You know, like, I'm, I don't know. Like, I don't think it was uh, to stay out of the reunion, but I think, I think maybe cooler heads will prevail a week later and things might start to change even regarding this. I think it was very reactionary and it could have been to stay out of the reunion and it could have been to start building your case because at some point, even if we don't want it, we're going to have to hear their story totally. And their story will be very, you know, because they've had seven months or so or longer with their story and everybody else is. And the one thing I want to keep telling the audience is everybody I talk to, even behind the scenes, everybody says, we did not know there might've been suspicions, but we did not know. No, that's what I keep hearing. Right. That's what I keep hearing too. I just keep thinking this whole restraining order, like if Sheena does have to be separated from uh, Raquel, they're going to have to do this. (laughs) They're going to have to do this reunion, two separate sound stages or like someone at Tom, Tom and and like a group at uh, Tom, Tom and a group at Schwartz and Sandy. Whatever it takes. But I want Sheena or like, just roll out Sheena in like a, one of those big magician boxes and have her chained up. Like, you know, like only magicians have to like get out, like have her chained up. And like, so there's no physical harm to Raquel at all. But I feel like, uh, I feel like it will be like Lala 
<laughs> Katie, Ariana, James Kennedy, and who else? Uh, at like Tom Tom or something. And then oh my God. Sandoval, Schwartz. <laughs> Like, like, Schwartz. Kristen oh, Doe. Man. Oh, <laughs> oh, man. Sandoval, such, oh, he's so bad, man. Um, the, <laughs> did you see this today? I, I got messaged about it and then I saw a picture of it. No, was what? that there is Lala hired some kind of truck. She's, she's sell, and I talked about that she's selling send it to Daryl sweatshirts because <laughs> yes. that was like a meme last week. I'm like, send it to Daryl. She now hired or paid a truck that has a video thing of like, send it to Daryl, merch now, la la kid. And it's driving down like Melrose Boulevard and stuff. I got sent a voice note today by Christina Ariel, who uh, is one of my friends. And she was like, this is insane. I just literally passed this. And then Bravo by Betches has a picture of it on their account. And I'm like, these people are potentially so toxic that they, there's like, they're already making like, a, there's a whole economy based around Scandaball now that I even, uh, you know, benefit from. And I think that's like the weirdest part is because this is, you know, at the end of it's the like day, people's we, lives, it's people and it's people's pain, but we can't help but go like you just talking about the reunion. I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I need them in the same room because it's going to be so intense to watch. Like it's right. like a Super Bowl for reality shows, but at the same time, it really is real. People keep thinking, oh, this is, no, it's really real. I just, um, I don't know how they film next season and there will be a next season, but like, I kept asking myself, like, how does Katie get in a room with Sandoval? They're like, how do all of these people? Hmm. But then I thought, well, think about the 10 seasons. Think about how many times these people still filmed with Jax after all of the lies, all of that. They still did it. But like, how does... Ariana get in a room with Raquel ever again. Like, those are the things, like, how does this happen? I know. I don't know what, what I almost said chapter 11. I don't know what uh, the, the you know, season 11 looks like, but I do agree with you. I think that they need to start filming sooner. They typically do, I think, like, June through, like, the summer, yeah. essentially. I think they need to bump it up. I need to see a Sheena birthday party. Her birthday's in April. She's a Taurus. So, like, or May something. Like, bump it up. Start filming well, in April. we already missed Ocean's second birthday this weekend. I saw photos at, so we're already behind schedule on this. But I feel like they already did the special episode. You guys, light and horrible lightning only strikes very often. Like, just right. cameras up right now. We'll breathe when it's over. But you guys should be, ca they should be capturing every little thing because... We don't want when things are all clean and nice with a bow. Like, I don't need another uh, Robin Dixon Potomac thing. But anyways, no. Kirby Johnson, are you going to do a special episode on Los Angeles pod about any of the Vander I, I, I How really can want, you do How can you I bring want, this to Los Angeles? I want Katie to come on. You know, Katie's a beauty girl, and I've been on her podcast talking about beauty. So I want her to come on my podcast, Dude. and I'm hoping to do that soon. Okay, that's uh, that was a... I've been dying to get Katie on for so long. And I think at this point I'm probably screwed because she could go on your pod, I'm sure. But I think they're like, I keep going like, oh man, because we were going to do it. Like she was like, oh, we're going to do it in a couple weeks. You'll see why. But it was because things were like happening with the Raquel Schwartz thing. He's like, the season will become a little more clear in a couple weeks. But now I like have a feeling like I'm just wondering how much of a muzzle they put on um, but like people are like like Lala's going on Sheena's show, you know. Like but I have Kristen's a feeling a lot of that stuff everywhere. is like be guys chill out. Like I feel like now things are getting to a point. Like I know Lala had to hold back uh, an episode for a day because I think she had to re-edit some things. Oh yeah, but, you know. But I think with Los Angeles, I think because you you could do an amazing interview that sprinkles, but then also talks about everything that Los Angeles is all about. What else is coming up for the podcast and you that we can support with? So we just launched our episode with Courtney Cox of Friends fame, of Gail Weathers from Scream fame. Oh, yeah. And she's incredible. If you guys don't love her, which I would be shocked, you will fall in love with her after this interview. She was so funny. She was so honest. We we made headlines this past week because- Wait, was we, that you because of the filler? The, the, yes. The, the, so that oh came my God, from my I podcast. I didn't realize that was you. So she talked about, like, about removing fillers. her fillers and, and how it like- was it how it um you don't really realize it because you live with yourself every day yep and something she, like that she she talked to, uh, at length about that the, you know we asked her about her biggest beauty regret and she mentioned fillers and she went off you know in uh, and told a story about that so um but she was also just so forthcoming in general she seems like the coolest chick of all time so um yeah. that's our most recent episode if you guys want to go check it out and we have new uh, episodes every Tuesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday. 
Los Angeles podcast. Uh, go subscribe, rate it five stars, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You, you can think somebody's getting really huge gas and they're fine, but don't. Every podcast needs support and especially ones like these. Uh, Kirby is insanely talented and thank you so, for coming back so quickly after the last appearance, but I was like, I, I gotta talk with you. I gotta, we gotta, we gotta wrap about this, you know? Of and course. It was such a perfect after the Oscars. So I'm such a fan of yours and continue to kick ass out there. Right back at you.